The sun was scorching hot all day, but now it has weakened a little. Black clouds have rapidly gathered on the horizon and filled up the sky. Lightning. Below us, a sea of dirty concrete roofs as far as the eye can reach, our beloved city. The roar of the vehicles in the street, the angry honking of horns, the howling of the dogs sniffing the approach of the storm, are pushing through towards us out of the twelve-floor chasm, tired of their ascension. And yes, some feeble twittering from the scarce, dusty poplars that grew together with the high-rise blocks of flats. Poplars, blocks, the same vertical, miserable structure. Poplars, blocks. A reek of hot asphalt with a taste of ashes mixed with a whiff of latrine, of decomposed garbage and the stuffed dumpsters from the shapeless bins in which selected waste collection is but a colour code on the overflowing bellies. It's the third day since garbage was last collected. It's written in the contract, once every three or four days. I adjusted the aerial and I taped up the loose cable. I put back the rows of dozens of cables and metal bars on the sea of grey lids, many of them abandoned, rusty, in disrepair, remnants of another age, a golden age. We took our ease and another sip of beer, like in the good old times. Are you happy, lad? I asked him. Are you happy? You are happy. Now that you are resting your head against the wall, the cool alien wall, I knew he wasn't. I looked him in the eyes, I caressed his cheek and I did him one last kindness. Come here, I told him. Come here, I want to show you something. We stood together, glued to one another on the tall, hot ledge and we looked down toward the lime tree I had planted there, twelve floors lower in the dusty yard where Uncle Postolake's word is the law. We both looked at the tree. Funny the way it looks from up here. And, and I stared after him. I did him one last kindness, gave him one last chance. Then I took a few more sips of beer. It was stifling hot what with the storm clouds gathered up on the horizon. Now I'm waiting for them to come knocking on my door, any minute now. Why aren't they knocking on my door? Are you happy, lad? I asked him. We'll, uh, we'll have to wait together until they come knocking on the door. I'm, uh, I'm out of beer, but it's okay. Do you know what I heard? What beer is made of nowadays, especially uh, plastic bottled beer. I buy those uh, big two litre bottles of beer. I like it like that, lots of froth. <coughs> you can even share it with a neighbour, because now it's cheaper than water. But how the hell? Can it be cheaper than water? Does that have good stuff in it? Oh, we'll see. Now, where's the... the uh... There we are. We've got uh, Bangalore, Ceramix 6XMG, or Filtrate. Now, these are supposed to be industrial enzymes, and they're produced by Novazymes in Denmark, and uh, loads of other stuff. I'll jot this down www.riseproject.ro You can read the entire article there. I like to be well informed. So, we've got uh, water. Distilled water. I only drink distilled water. They say water has a memory. But I don't want to drink water that's not a memory. Who knows when we lend us? <laughs> I only drink distilled water. Pure water. No rubbish in it. That's what I use for cooking too. Speaking of cooking, I'm a very good cook. Self-taught, all right, I'm uh, not as good as my wife. But uh, since she's been gone, God rest her soul, I uh, have no option. So, I've been thinking, while we're sitting and waiting here together, 
Would you like me to cook something for you? Are you hungry? Eh? Are you hungry, madam? Mm -hmm. Come on, don't be shy. Come on, are you hungry? Oh, come on, don't make no bones about it. Anyway, <laughs> I'm not going to cook anything much. Because there's loads of you, and there's only one of me. But it's certainly going to be something tasty and healthy. I've got informed. I'm abreast of everything related to healthy life, healthy food. But uh, don't say I'm obsessed, because I'm not. <laughs> but it's good to be, one has to be well informed. Because you are what you eat, aren't you? So, what do you think? Should we cook something tasty? Okay, all right. But before the fact, We're going to try some of this water. Let's pull these out. Thank you, madam. One for you. Oh, for that's not the way to do it. Here, let me show you. If you really want to uh, cleanse yourself of, uh, of everyday troubles and do something really healthy for yourself, you have to drink a glass of this water daily in the space of at least five minutes and swallow at most once every 20 seconds. While doing it, you have to try and empty your mind of everything else and only think about how you're drinking the water, about how it enters your mouth, about its flavour. Well, mine doesn't have any flavour because it's purely industrial H2O. But that's for the best. Think about how it flows afterwards down your esophagus, how it reaches your stomach. And it doesn't have to be something strained, laboured. It has to be the pure act of swallowing, the natural act. Don't think about it. Let your body do its job the way it should. Just pay attention, all right? Don't strain yourselves. Don't think about anything. Breathe normally, just like in any other moment in your life. Just don't think about anything. We are drinking. <laughs> We've all refreshed and purified ourselves. Let's go back to, oh God, before that, how rude of me. Um, allow me to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Angel Patrashku. I'm 64 years old. I've been retired for medical reasons for more than 15 years. But I currently keep myself active and in shape by practicing the noble occupation of taxi driving. Of course, you know what they say. If you don't want to be hit by Alzheimer's or senility or sclerosis, it's good to be active at this age to do stuff. I do stuff in the kitchen. And, as a taxi driver, an occupation I was forced to get into by the economic situation. To the same effect, I'm a grape grower in Urlazi in my free time as well. I own five hectares in a small cooperative there. And uh, I'm also the occasional gardener. The own a garden of some 500 metres here in, in Stefanesti. <coughs> it's just now that it's harder, ever since, uh, well, ever since my wife got sick. Two years and a half, that is. Anyway, so, um, 
what should we cook tonight? How about some pancakes? Eh? Good, good, eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> then pancakes it is. Did you know that pancakes are one of the oldest kinds of dish on earth? They used to make them in ancient Greece. In those times, they called um, is tanganites or taganites from the word tagano, which meant frying pan. Something like the one I'm going to use, namely pane. So tonight we're cooking panes. How about that? <laughs> All right then. Let's choose the filling now. Now, what do you think? Meat, cream cheese, jam. Is meat too taxing? Do you think? Too exacting? Yeah, that's true. You know what it's like nowadays. It's difficult to choose. I mean, normally you'd say, "Let's go for beef." Yes, sir. And in the out, when it's minced and fried with onion, it goes well with pancakes. I can vouch for that. I've done that. It's filled with proteins, but not too fatty. It has vitamin D, so uh, it gives you energy, and it's an asset to diets. But, but <laughs> lately, <coughs> researchers have been pointing out that uh, beef, well, red meat, it predisposes to cardiac disease, premature death, colon cancer, and heart attack. Moreover, it contains too much iron and an unexpected amount of saturated fats, meaning it's baneful. That's harmful. On the other hand, it's true that beef has conjugated linoleic acid, which is supposed to suppress cancerous tumours. With one thing and another, it's recommended that we uh, switch to chicken. White meat, of course. Now, chicken has good fat. It protects the heart, it's used in diets. It's true it has fewer proteins than red meat. Well, it's just that not even chickens are what they used to be. Now, they're being stuck with all kinds of growth hormones. But that's why there's so many bloody fat kids. <laughs> These bloody hormones also lead to precocious puberty, to breast cancer, prostate cancer. They increase the cholesterol. What can I say? It's a disaster. <laughs> And getting your hands on a homegrown chicken means a lot of running. But let me tell you that we don't know what these homegrown chickens are being fed on now. Because nowadays, even peasants use loads of chemicals and fertilisers, what with homegrown poultry presenting a great risk of salmonella. <coughs> Fish is uh, the better choice. It's light. It has iodine, phosphorus and potassium, which makes you beautiful and smart. Fish fat is good. It has antioxidants, it's anti-aging, so uh, don't avoid fatty fish. It's just that now, well, ever since the planet has uh, gone rotten and all the oceans are full of oil and plastic bottles, oh, you've heard about that plastic bottle island, haven't you, in the Pacific that's uh, as big as Cuba. Oh. It seems that fish are now full of dioxin and mercury. That makes them toxic for the fetus and babies, and it's very nasty for the nervous system. They used to say fish makes you brainy. Because <laughs> he's got phosphorus. Well, anyway, pancakes don't really go very well with fish, so well, this problem is solved for the moment. Then there's the old enemy. Pork. <clears throat> now, pork has got fortifying vitamins, B vitamins, and auxiliary virtues necessary for getting slim. It rapidly promotes a beneficial saturation. Doesn't work well in pancakes, unfortunately. But um, I recently saw on the web that pork lard with palinka is supposed to be the universal clear all, cure all, and the secret to the longevity of the Romanians of old. Oh, it was just an idea, just a casual chat, because you won't get any palinka from me, not even sweeter. So that's just um, no, definite no. Definite no for meat, especially because we now know the cow goes crazy, chickens get the flu, and pigs, swine fever, kind of plague that is. So, no meat. 
we better try something simple now. Uh, here we are. Jam. Now who doesn't like jam? So, here we have two jars of jam. Like my poor grandma used to say, God rest her soul. The mammy cheeker jar, just watch its slim figure. It's appetizing silhouette and its contents. Its contents. Yeah. We have a raspberry and cherry jam. The recipe belonged to my grandma from Dora Boy. What a treat. And here, in the other jar, we have plum jam. A bit more thick set, more peasant like, as country folks should be. This one's actually made in the country, in uh, Urlati. We've still got some plum trees there. I've kind of run out of the sweeter, but uh, this 100% natural jam can still bear witness to that. So, which one should we choose? Hmm? Which one? Raspberry and cherry? Or plum? What do you think? Raspberry and cherry. Well, I think we should have them both. Because <laughs> <laughs> after all, there's a lot of us here. And uh, oh, why not? Let's go the whole hog. Now let's see the uh, ingredients. What have we got? Now for those of you who are allergic to gluten or on a low gluten diet, I will be using, especially for you, a recipe for pancakes with no gluten. And so, therefore, no flour. You're going to ask me. How come no flour? <laughs> Easy as pie. Easy as pie. Pie, flour, did you get it? <laughs> <laughs> We've also got all the secret ingredients for pancakes with no flour right here. There we go. So, let's begin. Now, I know everybody knows how to make pancakes, but anyway, I've got a dilemma here. And those who often make pancakes know what I'm talking about. What should I use? Plain water, milk, or sparkling water? All right, now, all right there, before I answer it, because I know each and every one of you has got an answer ready for me, I want to give you some information I've recently found on the web about our daily milk. It seems that besides what we've known for some time now, well, namely that milk contains all kinds of hormones and stuff that uh, the animals in the, those industrial farms are fed with. Oestrogens, hormones, antibiotics, analgesics. Now it's been discovered that the cheap milk we all drink isn't actual milk, but it's rather made of lard, tallow and hydrogenated vegetable oil, additives, powdered milk, wheat flour, salt, bone meal. That's nice, isn't it? So I say, no milk. Now, here we have my usual demineralised water and sparkling water. I know you know the trick with this sparkling water that makes the pancakes fluffy. It's just that bottled water. So unfortunately, I don't have sparkling water, a sparkling water spring in the yard of my block of flats. Please pay attention. If it doesn't have an expiration date, it most likely contains some of the most harmful preservatives. But the uh, water I have here does have an expiration date, so I say we use it because we don't want to miss out on some nice fluffy pancakes, do we? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Well then, let's hit it. Now, while I'm mixing the eggs and the flour, you know the formula, don't you? Two eggs for five spoonfuls of flour, the egg whites separately. There we go. I say, let's chat back and forth. Let me tell you how I became a taxi driver. Now, I'm an educated man. I have a diploma in car engineering. You see, I'm interested in what happens around me, in why it happens, because I, uh, I won't and I can't leave things in the lap of the gods. I worked for over 20 years in a car factory at Dacia Pistestri in Mjavenic. Um, yeah, I was commuting. 
For 20 years I've poked my nose into coach works and I inhaled exhaust gas and I measured the wheel braking force. I worked long and hard for the smallest achievements in my life. I wasn't lucky. And anyway, that's the way things were back then. Some would say he was better. He was good. He was our life. And our youth. What can I say? First love. First alcohol. First... But, um... Oh, well. <laughs> lucky. I'll never be lucky. My son might be lucky. I could say he is a lucky boy. Yes. Some people are laughing now. But they're doing it in vain. Pricks. A child is the most beautiful thing that can happen in a man's life. Nothing compares to a child's innocence. The child loves you unconditionally. When you play with him, when... Of course. Child also means a lot of responsibilities, struggling, pain. Especially in this mad world which is heading towards. I'm going to die. My son, too. Black clouds have rapidly gathered on the horizon and filled up the sky. Lightning. Below us, a sea of dirty concrete roofs as far as the eye can reach. Our beloved city. I would have preferred. I mean, that's why I'm here, aren't I? To explain. To explain myself. So that you can pretend that you understand. What kind of man am I? What kind of people are we? What world are we living in? Why do we live? Sounds kind of high flown, but it isn't. How now, hmm? My wife, Mary, and I, we lived in those other days, the days of Ceausescu's decree, and of the heroine mothers. We didn't even know about condoms, contraceptives. Abortion was illegal. But even then, it didn't occur to us to ask ourselves if we wanted it. And Tudor was our happiness, in spite of those awful times. What did we know? He was our luck, and born with a silver spoon. There, I'm now adding some salt powder. I know what you're thinking. Look at this guy. He is using market processed salt with anti caking agents with E536 meaning potassium thiocyanide. That one which decomposes at 100 degrees Celsius in potassium cyanide and iron chloride. You were thinking that, weren't you? <laughs> Ta-da! No, my dears. I would never do anything like that, neither to me, nor to you. I'm only using salt from my special Himalayan salt stock in the composition of these marvellous pancakes that I'm making for you, as well as in all the food I prepare with my own pan. It's more expensive, that's true, but uh, help is priceless, isn't it? That day, my Mary was coming home from her school where she worked with a fellow worker who would offer to drive her home in his starship car. She was seven months pregnant. And a girl, some high school kid, just jumped on the crossing. Mary's fellow worker hit the brakes so suddenly, he almost had that reckless girl on the plummet. My wife was startled and that was it. The waters broke. He took her directly to the hospital. I remember, I was waiting in the lobby here and in a corner there was this big beaker plant in a wooden planter, as they made them in those days. And I was fretting and, and pacing up and down. I mean, in those days, you couldn't even know if it was a boy or a girl. I wanted a girl. And as I was passing the plant, I started hacking the tip of a, a fecus leaf. It was a huge branch. And it had these pulpy, longish, big leaves. The, the tip was crispy and it, it burst with a snap. Green, light sap stuck to my fingers. 
I was thinking about Mary and about that water, which isn't actually water, but it's amniotic liquid, the cradle of life. And then a hag of a nurse comes to me and starts having a go, saying, why am I tearing the fetuses loose? I, I said, I only tore a small part, but it. Well, she goes on and on, asking me if I'm illiterate and don't I know that that's the growing bud of the leaf? Well, I didn't know that. And I haven't been able to find that out afterwards, but I looked it up. Now it happens with a wet. Yeah, right, let me write that down. Fetus, growing bud, leaf. There. And then this hag tells me I have a little boy. And that I'm lucky because he had a double circular cord, meaning the navel string was wrapped round his neck twice. And if he'd been born when he was due, it was a great risk for him to be stillborn, asphyxiated by his own navel string. And that's how my Tudor was, born with a silver spoon. Okay, let's uh, whip the egg whites. I, uh, I use an egg beater, I'm against mixers and such like. Even though I'm an engineer and uh, I know all the entrails of a machine, when you're cooking you have to be in contact with the raw material to impress your subtle energy upon it. Something in you is given, like a gift there. It's saved from the food you're making. And these machines only are strangers from this energy from our hands, from nature, don't they? Let me tell you a secret. I don't love cars either. I never have. It's going to sound strange to me, a car engineer, saying that. I know everything that lies under the bonnet, but I don't love them. I've loved other things in my life. It's just that many of them are over now. Well, that's life. Now, let me beat these eggs with interest using the egg beater, because I'm not that doddery. I don't know what your opinion is, but I believe I'm a con man. Still beardless and forever young in my taxi driver's coat. <laughs> I wrote some poems in high school. In college. I can't say which, uh... Well, my looks are doing just fine. I do 10 push-ups a day, every morning, and 50 squats at lunchtime. Whether I have to drive that day or not, I do them. I take proper lists, I drink tea, I don't smoke. No alcohol, well, maybe a beer once in a while, because it's more natural, but uh, nothing besides. And nothing, everything, everything natural. Maybe some stump wine as well, when the grapes are ripe, but nothing else. What else? Take like yesterday. As for instance, I drove all day long, from four o'clock in the morning for 12 hours solid. After five hours, one of my legs was hot, the other one cold. I kept the cold one on the accelerator pedal, and the other one was in the heat. What did I eat all day yesterday? My nuts first thing in the morning, then some rye bread. Why? The things I've heard they put in bread these days. I've got a note over there somewhere, but I can't be bothered to get it now. I've got my hands in these egg whites. Well, after lunch, I gulp down four apples. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. And uh, a pomegranate, because it has loads of antioxidants. Although it's hard with those pips. Because I keep my car pristine, you know. When my wife was alive, she used to cook. And how she cooked all kinds of stew, broth, chicken, turkey. I should get myself one of those uh, baking machines. It's the only way to know what you're eating. Now look at these egg whites. They're stiff. And they've got such a delicate smell. I smell fresh, raw. Mm. Well, I wake up at four o'clock and I've recently discovered those uh, plank drills. Do you know? Tell what they are. Show you. You have to hold on in a push up position as long as you can. <laughs> They're called isometric drills. It looks easy, but it's all Uh, 
started recently. And uh, I can take it for about 40 seconds because uh, I've only just started. <laughs> the idea is to uh, gradually increase the time you hold off. And then when you reach, say, two to three minutes, then uh, that's it. Done. You're set then. Sound as a bell. <laughs> that's right. That's life. Why, well, I haven't been ill since uh, if it wasn't for that tax office guy. Poplars, blocks, the same vertical miserable structure. Poplars, blocks. A reek of hot asphalt with a taste of ashes, mixed with a whiff of latrine of decomposed garbage. Are you happy, lad? natural, what with all this crazy nutrition and all the other bad things they're feeding us, right? Cancer. What helps? It even got out in the media. Although, I'm sure these guys want everything covered up. They want to kill us undercover. Romania is the first country in the world that will use initium in agriculture. Now, that's an ingredient from Codex Alimentarius. They put it in grapes, potatoes, tomatoes, <coughs> cucumber, and onions. The Germans. Dr. Menchinikovsky, the nutritionist, said that this substance is very hard to exude. And if you eat it on a regular basis, it's never exuded. And it looks like it's got something to do with colon cancer. Meaning, it does this and that inside your body, and it increases the incidence of colon cancer. Beautiful, eh? Now, I've arrested Dr. Minchin. It's been a while now. And what of it? Well, he kind of upset some people with his statements, right? The guy was right. But he upset some people and... Straight to the lockup with him. We are a second and equal. No, we don't feel that way, but on a global level, the best guinea pigs. That's life. Let's um, put some butter in the pan, shall we? These pancakes are going to be a little bit greasy, but uh, it's different from oil butter. Much more delicate, you'll see. I've got the professional long time. But, uh, oh, I haven't finished telling you how I ended up working as a taxi driver. Well, after the revolution, I worked for a while at RAR. That's the Romanian automobile registry. I moved with my job to uh, Bucharest to be closer to my family because, well anyway, in the last two years of the past year, I had moved as a service manager to Calarash. Well, and then in 94 to 97, I got the idea that I should start a business, like everyone else. So well, I got together with a colleague, an engineer, and we started a private workshop. We quit our state finance jobs. But in the first years, it was very difficult because we didn't have much dough when we started and everything we made, we spent on improvements, you know, tools. Then we found out that our employees were stealing from us. Now, just like everywhere else. That's life. Now, it isn't like it is nowadays, though. Nowadays, they might even make you kick the bucket if you don't pay them on time. Anyway. After about three years, my partner gave up, and I was left on my own. And slowly, slowly, it started working out for me, until the crisis came. That was a disaster. Now let's see, five or six years ago, zap. Yeah, about six years ago, the uh, tax office guys came around. I don't know even to this day whether they just came by themselves or a, uh, a friend from the competition sent them something. Because 
I was on good terms with the guys from our AR, naturally. But it looks like it's better to lie low in this country. And this tax business kills me. Because I didn't give an invoice to each and every client. Well, everybody did it like that. A bloody inspector dragged me through the courts for a year and a half. He held his ground. Didn't want to hear about it. Not even with bribes or interventions. Till he was convinced that I was honest. But I am an honest man. And I always have been. As honest as you can get in this country. Anyway, when they finally dropped the charges, I told him, Uncle, you've wasted 10 years of my life. You know, why are you talking to you? I can still smell that musty air in that old archive building. And the shriveled walls. That's what courts are like. At least the ones I was in. Of course, now they say they're refurbishing them. Right, you want you that, Ceausescu, when he said they wouldn't be able to whitewash in 20 years what he had built. Well, these courts are like that. Flakes of lime plaster and mould. I could have learned to eat plaster. Like some kids do. Not cheese. The roar of angry horns, children's screams, dogs howling, concrete lids, faint owl hooting, in the longish, dusty poplars. Poplars, blocks, the same vertical, miserable structure. Poplars, blocks. Are you happy, lad? stories of e-numbers and other stuff. You're holding a landing in your hand, a green bunch of them. And you tell yourself, this green, fresh, good and healthy thing can give you cancer. Pain, holes in your stomach, death. Do you know what a colostomy is? It's a hole made in the belly of a man who has developed a colon cancer. If he's operated on and part of his colon, part of his rectum and other parts are removed, it's a hole through which a man poops. Because he can't poop the natural way designed by God. If there is a God. Zap. Mm, what a sweet smell of panes. And after Mr. Tax Inspector, I thought I was done for. Anyway. In less than a year, I gave up on the business, brought up the shutters. That's life. I gave it 15 years of my life and ended up with almost nothing. Just insomnia, worries, debts and hatred. Another hatred for the wretched thieving employees, for the inspections of that bloody back undertaker, for the cheeky, thick-skinned clients, for the uppishness of the friends in RAR whose palm you had to grease and you have to invite them to barbecues when they descend upon you with a firm. And them and their wives you have to rub noses with them, especially at Easter and Christmas. Well, we have to observe the holy days, don't we? Oh, I got an answer. And my poor Mary was the first to go. Pancreatic cancer. Nine months altogether. All for nothing. Second-hand citizens of the planet. And two He was really lucky. Because what we put in our mouths leaves us with no escape. The air, the water, everything leads us there, doesn't it? But doesn't it? Just look at that. Such a beautiful pancake. Now, let me tell you a story. About this life phase. This food, this initiate, it's a true story. I know it from a certified source, from a cousin of mine who lives close by the monasteries in Moldavia. It seems like uh, for the last few years, the bodies they dig out for the seven years after death rites, they're found to be perfectly preserved, mummified. And then the church has a big problem. Because the well preserved body, belong to dead pack 
crats, thieves, murderers, drunkards. And we're not going to canonize, but to sanctify all these thieves, are we? What are the real saints then? I mean, what if a monk who was considered a saint during his lifetime decomposed his bedroom? When the village drank, he was discovered as whole and as beautiful as in his last days on the lovely plains of Bukovina. I mean, what's the criteria? It seems that some of these mummified bodies were taken to the lab in Yarsk, to the University of Medicine, and to hospitals, so that they could be studied. And it seems that the explanation still lies in the food. They say that there are so many chemicals in the dead body cells, but they don't decompose. Not even worms like us now, how to say. We will all become wax dolls. Dead, but beautifully preserved. The smile on our lips. Is that the promise of the Bible? Or is that something else? What was it about the spirit? What spirit? The spirit, the soul. Well, that's all up to all that should matter, right? And our anxiety and what we offer our children, the bright future that will never come. I hope my poor Mary is all right, wherever she is. And after seven years, when someone might dig her out, not me, not our son, we won't be around anymore for certain. It won't matter if they find a bag of bones or a body of wax chemicals. This was it, flour pancakes. Now, I know your mouths are watering, but, but, no discrimination. We'll have to wait for the ones who are intolerant to gluten. The ones who might not consume gluten for different reasons, including religious ones. I know, but there's no religious tradition that forbids this, but how can you be sure nowadays? For example, recently, the, uh, the Dutch, Chamber of Commerce has officially recognised the Church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster. <laughs> now that's a new cult promoting people's equality. And its followers believe that heaven is a beer volcano fitted with a female stripper enterprise. <laughs> when they congregate, the uh, Pastafarians, <coughs> that's what the followers call themselves, Pastafarians, they socialise. They eat pasta, drink beer, and discuss their religion. They even have a traditional costume. They wear pasta strainers on their heads. And these utensils are even represented on official documents. And that's for real. It's not a joke. They don't say anything about gluten. That's true. But on the other hand, nowadays, there are all kinds of things. I'm not saying they're true. But you never know. They concern cereal gluten and especially bread gluten, being responsible for all types of diseases. We've got uh, different types of cancer, loose lupus, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, chronic fatigue, irritable colon, and other inflammatory colon diseases, other autoimmune diseases. Yeah, I know, some people say it's just tall stories. Well, I'm just making pancakes here. I oh know, I oh know. If we start talking and quoting articles on the web about what's good to eat and what isn't, we're going to be here till tomorrow. All I know is, my brother died of colon cancer last year. He'd been fighting it for three years. Surgery, chemotherapy, the whole thing. Colostomy. Now, do you think I know about colostomy? Are you happy now that you're resting your head against the wall? The cool, alien war. I knew he wasn't. I looked him in the eyes. I caressed his cheek and I did him one last favour. Okay then, it's settled. We're going to make the gluten-free pancakes and then we're going to eat all of them like comrades. Is that a deal? Let's see. Does anyone know what these no-flour pancakes are like? But um, it's all getting busy again. I have here. I found it a 
from day to day. It's the tuft of a cap he used to wear when he was a kid. You know those silly round caps with a big tuft they used to make in communism. Much more reliable than the, the ones they make nowadays. But still, my little boy, he would pull at them and he wouldn't give up until he ripped them all off. And then his mum had to sew it back in place for him. And when she couldn't sew it anymore, he had to wear it like that, without a tuft. So we managed to get him another cap. Yeah, because in those days we couldn't afford to change clothes just like that, as easy as it gets. Now we live in a throwaway society. Things are different. Yeah, right. And this. This. This is one of those tufts. I kept it for years. In the pockets of my old coat. In the old days. Winter would come. I'd put it on for the first time. I'd find this tuft in my pocket. I did this for years, many, many years after the children had grown up and long since left home. That's what winter means to me. The first frost and this wooden ball in the pocket of my coat. Something you can touch and smell. Just like when we say, it smells like winter. This is from my boy. All right, so these, uh, these flour free pancakes are easy to cook. We just have two eggs and two bananas. Or more, it depends. We're going to use two eggs and two bananas, just like it says on the web. Course, uh, they say there aren't that many gluten intolerance among us tonight. Are there many gluten intolerance among us tonight? My thoughts exactly. Intolerance don't come from the theatre. That's why theatre is pointless. Because it's about loads of beautiful stuff everyone agrees with, even before leaving their houses. So I don't really get what we've come here to the theatre. That's life. Yeah, now, uh, the whole secret with this recipe is to get the right proportions. Now, if the eggs are big, then you try to use big bananas. If you use three bananas and two eggs, or you have a banana that's too big, then you just use one banana with the two eggs. That's the idea, basically. We cut the banana into thin slices, we break the eggs, put them on top, and mix the whole composition. Now, as I was saying, if you want something very fine and very smooth, then use a blender, a mixer. But since I'm against machines, you know what I do like about cars? The order. The fact that every time you lift the bolt, you know exactly what you're going to find there. Regardless of the model and the manufacturing unit. The engine, the radiator, the battery, the hoses, the water pump, the windscreen washer bottle. Regardless of the age and the make. And I also like the elegance. The seats that you can fold in all directions. The smell of leather, all plush and freshness. The air conditioning, the fact that it's warm inside during the winter, it's just like home in a way. And the smell of petrol and of new seats. Cars are beautiful animals. But they don't have a soul. Empty carcasses. Nothing is more depressing than a car junkyard. When all the order, all that warm usefulness is destroyed. Cold and ugly and twisted intestines, they're all that's left. Nothing calls anything to mind anymore. Uselessness and nothing. And again, what's left of a human being? Besides a dead body, beautifully preserved through chemicals. If it's true that there's something on the other side, what exactly do we keep? What is it that really matters? What do we take with us? to the other world? What exactly from our, our gestures, from our thoughts and deeds influences that remaining part we're leaving with? There's another trick to this recipe for a flowerless pancake. 
If you still want them to be more beefy, closer to the classical recipe, you add a gluten-free grain biscuit. Bought it, that far. <laughs> That's the trick. You won't see the good stuff I'm going to cook here. I had a neighbour once, also a taxi driver. He got sick about a year and a half ago. I was arranging my poor wife's 40 day memorial service and he couldn't come because he was undergoing his first medical tests. Pancreas cancer. <coughs> Wipes you out. Oh, by the way, I've just read an article. The nitrites, the preservatives in cold meats, are supposed to increase the risk of pancreas and stomach cancer hundreds of times. And these are to be found in all the processed cold meats, all the meat that isn't fresh, all the frozen pizzas with meat, meat filled pasta, hot dogs, hamburgers, sausages, all the canned cooked meats, soups and edibles, almost all the meat dishes in restaurants, canteens and, wait for it, kindergartens and schools. Everything that's not made of fresh or frozen meat. Now, I'm not the one saying this. It's the World Organization for the Study of Cancer. Well, and this neighbour of mine kicked the bucket in a few months. And now, well, except for his wife and his two small children left behind, because uh, he was still young. No one remembers him. Does he remember his question? I don't even remember what he looked like. Although he and I had a few set to it in front of our block of flats over the years. All right, I'm uh, frying them now in butter again, naturally. Dear me, see what's going to come out now. Good stuff. So, what's left after all? Because if we're talking about those dreary broken carcasses imbued with the knitting, lead, and all the rubbish we gulped down, all we're left with are the pork scraps and the fruit yogurts and chocolates we fill in made of papaya juice. If all that matters is chasing to earn and consume pearl sauce shampoos, all of these won't make no never mind. But some will mind, if you know what I mean. I think there are um, about two more of these banana rissoles and then we're done. We can start eating. Eating. The last frontier of pleasure. No embarrassment about it either, especially because what I've prepared here is 100% natural. And the eggs, well, you haven't seen them, but I can vouch for them. They're the small kind. There's this country woman in O'Ball, and uh, I'll give you the ones over. Not like the eggs in the supermarket. Do you know, I've heard that the guys from the egg factories hired some people to stick chicken feathers on and paint the eggs with chicken waste. That's supposed to make our experience more authentic. But, come on, it's different when you break an egg into a frying pan, and first of all, you've got to scrape off some green gallinaceous shit. But if, if we tested it in labs, the same clever hormones would come out, even from the shit. These guys would even use authentic countryside shit just to make us believe. But those chickens of theirs are still being grown in a 50 square metre area and with their legs buckled under the artificial weight of breasts and wings for the whole kit and caboodle. Let me tell you a story. It's the last one, I swear. Once, in the days when the workshop was still going well, and I had a bit of money, I went into this, this store that sells fire products. In Stephanesti, in those days, we had these uh, bio tomatoes, smitten, lighted. And we were sick and tired of so much fire growth. So, in the end, we went and bought some grafted seedlings. But we thought, why not indulge ourselves a little? I bought whatever came to mind. Cheese, some cold meats, a jar of zakushka. I got home. It was wonderful. First we opened the zakushka. The entire family ate it like it was a treasure. Like it was a sacrament. But better. Because it was eggplant, Zakusha, my favourite. We were all there and we were all happy. But when I looked at the label, Deal 15, Allotment A, Batch X, Village, and I said to my wife, Look, love, isn't this village there where 
14. Un pa ci sono. Mi lo sapete mai. Mi dite sempre. 100 meters. 100 kilometers from Chernobyl. Eco 100%. I think it's true. Well, it's true we're almost free from cesium because it's got a half life of about 40 years. But the iodine from Chernobyl has a half life of about 200 years. Well, fine. Some say that at first the radioactive cloud went north then because uh, that's how the wind was blowing. So not much got to us. But anyway, that's life. What can I say? I haven't tried the eco food since. I stuck to the parsley, you know, go on. And to the hormones and the chicken, you buy a cora. Anyway, there we go. There we go. Now the, uh, the uh, Marachinka jar and the Yonel jar are entering the stage. Go on, please. I can microwave the regular ones. Just a little bit, because uh, they've got to be cool. Just go on, please. Go and help yourselves. Just with the goodness of my heart. Come on, don't be shy. Come on. Please help yourselves to what you wish every one of you. Well, I would come and wait on you, but I think it'd be better if you uh, if you came down here. Mate. Sir. Please uh, help yourselves. I don't have anyone to dish up with. <coughs> I'm alone. Alone. You can see. My boy too. Are you happy, lad? I asked him. Are you happy? You are happy. Now that you are resting your head against the wall. The cool, alien wall. I knew he wasn't. I looked him in the eyes. I caressed his cheek and I did him one last kindness. Come here, I told him. Come here, I want to show you something. We stood together, glued to one another, on the tall, hot ledge, and we looked down towards the lime tree I had planted there, twelve floors lower, in the dusty yard where Uncle Postelarque's word is the law. We both looked at the tree, funny the way it looks from up here, and and I stared after him. I did him one last kindness, gave him one last chance. Then I took a few more sips of beer. It was stifling hot, what with the storm clouds gathered up on the horizon. Now I'm waiting for them to come knocking on my door any minute now. Why aren't they knocking on my door? Are you happy, lad? I asked him. My wife had pancreas cancer. She died less than two years ago. Good to My brother had colon cancer. He died a year and a half ago. He struggled longer. My neighbour I wake up every morning and chills go down my spine because of the dull sting in my breastbone. <coughs> it's just an ulcer, the doctor told me. But what do I know? Take some, please. Help yourself. I didn't want him to go through this suffering, through his paranoia. I pushed him into the void from up there, from the height of those 12 floors. I offered him the last redemption, forgiveness, so that his anguish would be over. You don't believe it? Believe it. Because truth is in everything we consume, and truth will get to all of us in the end. And cancer and heart disease forgive no one, and they aren't choosing. And everyone, all of us, the second-hand citizens of the planet, the guinea pigs, the rats that have bred excessively and don't have money for Himalayan salt, have to thin out a little. What did they write on the salt packet? Thinning agent. 
right? The kind of cyanide thing you gave him. But you shouldn't believe it. We have to thin out a little so that the money bags of this world can breathe a bit more easily in their villas that cost millions and millions of euro. What does a small Negro who's withering in Africa matter? That's life. Are you happy, lad? I asked him. And I threw him into the void. I threw him. I knew he wasn't happy. Eat up. Eat up. It's all I still had to offer. They're going to be knocking on my door any minute now. <clears throat> Surprised they're not knocking on the door. Why aren't they knocking on the door? I scared you a bit then, didn't I? <laughs> well, you don't feel like eating anything anymore. Well, my pancakes really are good. Actually, I tricked you. I never had a son. Me and my wife, we never had a son. I didn't throw anyone off the book. We would have liked to have had a son, but uh, when, um, well, you know the story I told you with the, the accident on the crossing with, with the girl, the high school student, where my wife was startled and everything. That was true, including the succulent uh, fetus leaf. It's just that the fetus, the, uh, the baby, the embryo, he wasn't seven months old. He was just three and a half. So obviously, nothing could be done. Too bad. His name might have been too. After this, my wife was never able to have children. The, uh, the cat tuft belongs to my brother's son, my nephew, David. He's 21 now, just taller than a maypole. My brother had, uh, well, he has a boy and a girl. They're preoccupied by what they eat as well. The girl, Otelia, is a vegetarian or a vegan, I'm not sure yet. So you can eat. Please do. Uh, this might be a bit like a memorial service for my unborn child, but well, maybe this really means he was born with a silver spoon. Do you think? And the rest of the stories. I assure you, they're real. My brother, my wife, my taxi driver, neighbour. I had a dog, Otto. It was him that replaced. Well, it was someone for us to take care of. I used to take him with me onto the roof terrace when I went to fix the aerial. It was two months after he'd started rubbing his head up against the wall that I took him for a check. Because I read on the web there might be something wrong with him. Something wrong with his head. Cancer. I mean, who knows what that dry food and hairs he's made of. Plus, he was very old. So I stood up there with him, waiting for the storm. It was as if he felt something. He snuggled up to me. With all that annoying fur of his, and the smell of animal and feed. He looked into my eyes, and I pushed him. It's just a dog, right? They won't even miss the fact that a crushed corpse full of flies fell in at the fishy manor from the roof of the block. And it might be so that no one knocks on my door. And anyway, it was just an accident, right? Have we settled this? Do we have a, a sort of secret deal on this? Are you going to stand by me? Do you think it was easy for me? The last soul in this house. Are you standing by me? We keep this a secret, okay? It was an accident. Go on. Help yourselves. I don't know anything about food, about life, now. 
I don't even feel like cooking for myself. My, my Mary used to cook this, that and the other. Potage, rot, peas, stew, chicken, wings, meatball, rot, turkey, rot, pickled cabbage juice, roasted pork, well, that kind of stuff. I'm doing just fine on salami and bread. And it doesn't really matter how many preservatives they're using because I'm eating it alone. So please, help yourselves. The marmalade really is from her auntie, but I bought the Jamie and Mary Chica jar. I haven't visited that place in a while. Neither have I been to the market garden. So I hope my cooking tonight really connects with you. Please, help yourselves. Let this be like, like a communion, as it should be, here at the theatre. A moment of silence in a sea of madness. We're here, in the middle of a city full of dust and discharge gas, and we're looking increasingly like some pathetic motor car with an out-of-date MOT and which pollutes increasingly. What legacy am I leaving behind? <coughs> What legacy are you leaving behind? I leave here now some pancakes, free from all the toxins that are invading our bodies, our brains, our blood, our muscles, our myocardium. Have you noticed death? Have you seen death? I've seen loads of death people. Real ones. We are we are stuffing ourselves watching TV with dead people who don't mean anything to us anymore. A hundred dead bodies a day. In I don't know what war, in I don't know what country, the other end of the world. But nothing seems real anymore. The real dead people on TV in a sorry corner of the world equals the millions of dead people in some stupid Hollywood movie about the unteenth end of the world predicted by the Zulus in Kankaka a thousand years ago. And no one, no one, not the children who died of hunger in a third world country, not the utility man in Romania, the future great young hopeful of Bucharest actors playing the Russian in the seventh row of the first thousand victims of the latest action movie, not one of them has a greater value than the straw those special effect dummies are made of. Or simply pixels on a computer. It means nothing. Death hasn't met anything in a long time. That's life. <laughs> we could go out in the yard of our block of flats to accompany on his last journey the gypsy who used to live on the ground floor and with whom we drank at Sweeka a year ago at the baptism ceremony of his great nephew. I've known him for 30 years. We've been through two earthquakes together and still he's but a wax dump, a straw man. We are being brainwashed. And the most human-like things possible, suffering and human decomposition, have become a matter of indifference to us. We live in an ongoing newscast and it's all the same to us. Oh, go on. Help yourselves. Death has been banished. Beaten. We just see death counterfeits and commercials that teach us how to prolong our life as long as possible. No matter what. From the moment you've crossed to the other side, from the moment you've got ill, there's a blanket of silence. You'll never see any commercial, any coverage, any news from a cancer hospital. A hospital for kids with cancer, gangrene, pus, generalised metastasis, pain and helplessness, Alzheimer's and the loss of all dignity. Meditating, even for just five minutes a day on such things, would mean for us to stop treasuring other things than money and spending them on immortality formulas, wouldn't it? Oh, go on! Help yourselves! We are but consuming and excreting machines. Robots meant to carry the burden of their own needs. Needs that are induced by means of the TV stream and to satisfy these false needs, which are not connected to the needs of the animal, yes? or to a scrap of humanity. We all labour 
obsequiously for the masters of this world. Slaves brought to heel, not with a whip, but with a lot of other more subtle weapons, which don't leave room for choice, for rebellion. And they make you enjoy like a moron all the humiliations of life on this planet. It's sophisticated, this planet of the humans, this society. A certain gentleman quite rightly said, if I were reincarnated, I would like to come back to Earth as a killer virus that reduces human population. That was Prince Philip, <laughs> husband of Queen Elizabeth, Duke of Edinburgh, and a leader of the World Wildlife Fund. But not us. It's never about us. It's never about us. Death and cancer and killer viruses and the suffering are always someone else. About whom it's better to forget everything and, and sink in the absolving silence and into the TV screen that's so good for us. So good. Self-forgetting and indigestion. Help. Help yourselves. Have you, have you finished, Annie? Are they done with? Then I'm finished here as well. I hope you enjoyed this meal together. Now I shall sure learn Sit here alone, quietly. I'll open a can of sardines in oil for myself. I don't need more than that. I've eaten my elephants, as it were. Did you know, throughout his entire life, a man is supposed to eat the equivalent of six elephants. And I guess that's the exact number that comes out the other end as well. Because the weight of a human body gains in a lifetime a significant amount compared to the, uh, the weight of six elephants. Do you realise how many elephants made of shit six to seven billion bodies have populated the planet with? So in the end, what do we leave behind? What good is all this continuous, insatiable munching? You're better to have some initium on toast and two leaves or a can of sardines. Sardines contained the following. Hydroxypropylated diastarch phosphate, E1440. Acetylated diastarch adipate, 1422. Monosodium glutamate, E621. Citric acid, E330. Guar gum, E412. Xanthan gum, E415. Sodium saccharin, E954. However, curiously, there are no E numbers written on this one in my hand. That's a good trick. Not writing the E code, just the name. There, it's got citric acid, nothing else. And then, we have here a series of the most toxic foods possible. very, very slow, months or years. See, the carcass is resilient. It can take a lot. That's life. But I can try. I'm going to open and eat all these guilty goodies while watching a simple show. It's guaranteed that I'll forget all about my dilemmas and feelings of loneliness. And maybe I'll even laugh out loud a little bit. I'll fall asleep with my belly smudged with pizza-flavoured colouring agents and with the commercial of a barbecue turkey at the highest volume. Good night. Oh, and uh, if you still feel you know, the need for something like a piece of advice, say, because, because we spent so much time together tonight, and we shared these delicious pancakes, like brothers and sisters, they were good, right. Then what can I tell you? I don't know. I think 
The advice I would give you would be, don't make babies. Stop making babies. And as to those you've already got, because you don't want this child of yours to live to the day when Maggie Freak doesn't know what to be his own child is it? You don't want him to live to that day, do you? The day on which a father can't even guarantee to his child the air he's breathing. I won't tell you why and how, because we'll be starting it all over again. That's just life. So that's about the way things are. Of course, the smell in here. It's a good smell, though, isn't it? Isn't it? Go on. Good night, then.